So good afternoon, everybody. This is Senate Institutions. We are meeting to talk about draft request 20-0815, specifically draft 3.2 of the land swap resolution. Um, I do understand that we have had as a committee some conversation about these parcels before. I'm gonna ask Michael Chernick to do a quick walkthrough and for everybody's edification, I have promised my committee this is going to be a very short meeting because we all have other Zoom activities we have to go through today. So Michael, if you would. I'd by be the delighted. way, I'm Joe Benning. I should introduce myself. I'm the chair of the committee. Uh, we have Senator Lyons, we have Senator Mazza, and we have Senator Hooker. Senator Rogers is uh, not going to be joining us apparently today. And now up on your screen, we have the actual document that we'll be talking about. So Michael, if you would, please. I'd be delighted to, oops, there we go. Disappeared for a second. Good afternoon for the record. My name is Michael Chernick. I'm on this, one of the uh, legal attorneys at Legislative Council. Uh, this is a joint resolution relating to the annual state lands transaction. I just lost the, there we okay, go. We'll, we'll try it again. <laughs> Uh, this every year, the department, there is a provision in the uh, Vermont statutes annotated that permits the Department of Forest, Parks and Recreation to uh, complete land transactions, sales, easement swaps, etc. by way of a resolution as opposed to a statute. It's a fairly unusual provision in the statutes. And every year, the institutions committee will have three or four different land issues involved. This year, there are, a, there are a couple here. And this has been recently amended since it initially went to the committee earlier in the spring as the department has found additional information concerning the um, Yale easement. And with that, I will proceed. In 1964, in order to provide access, uh, including public access from Route 155 to the Okemo State Forest in Mount Holly, the state acquired fee ownership of a 50-foot strip of land across three privately owned parcels. Two of the parcel owners, in order to access their respective parcels, had long since secured an easement across the state-owned strip. The third parcel's owner, Yale University, included in its deed to the state a contingency clause, which has never been acted upon, for an access easement across the state's parcel and the Commissioner of Forest, Parks and Recreation now seeks to grant an easement to Yale for access to the university's land. And whereas the deeded description of the 50 foot strip of land that the owners of the Coleman, Barber, those were the other two parties and Yale University parcels conveyed to the state of Vermont contains Scribner's errors and omits uh, courses and distances, creating confusion as to the location of the rights of way conveyed to the owners of the Coleman and Barber parcels and the right of way conveyed to Yale University. And the department now uh, desires to correct through exchange of conveyances of corrective deeds. Moving on to page two, uh, in September 2018, Michael and Pamela Kingman filed a civil suit against the state seeking a declaratory judgment to determine the boundary line between their land and the northern terminus of Brambury State Park in Salisbury. The parties have, extent, uh, have reached a, 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 executed a settlement agreement and release of the civil lawsuit involving the exchange of quit claim deeds, the establishment of a new boundary line and the relinquishment of any claim rights of Michael and Pamela Kingman to the south of the line and the state to the north of the line. And whereas 10 VSA 2696B, the statutory section to which I was referring, uh, provides that the Commissioner of Forest, Parks and Recreation may sell, convey, exchange, or lease lands or interests in land, or may amend deeds, leases, and easement interests with the approval of the General Assembly. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Commissioner of Forest, Parks, and Recreation is authorized to convey a right-of-way easement to Yale University across a 50-foot strip of land to, in the town of Mount Holly that is located beginning at a point on the edge of State Highway 55 and traverses the Coleman parcel to the boundary with the Yale University parcel and that Yale University shall use the right of way exclusively to access its land. The Department of Forest, Parks and Recreation shall reserve 
for itself and its successors, licenses and assigns the right to use this easement in common with Yale University for public, I'm waiting to stop scrolling here, for public recreational access to Okemo State Forest, including for snowmobiling and cross-country skiing and for any type of forest management activity, including those that involve the use of vehicles and equipment. And most importantly, the last line of this clause, forest management uses shall be a uh, priority to which all other uses shall be subordinate. And further resolved that the Commissioner of Forest Parks and Recreation, and this is new, makes change or convey corrective deeds to the owners or successors of the Coleman, Barber, and Yale University parcels abutting or adjacent to Okemo State Forest to correct Scribner's errors in the description of the 50-foot strip of land and right of way. And be it further, the Commissioner of Forest Parks and Recreation may exchange quit claim deeds with Michael and Pamela Kingman for all rights, title, and interests in certain lands in the town of Salisbury on the northern and southern sides of an agreed upon boundary and further resolve that the copy of the resolutions transmitted to the Commissioner of Forest Parks and Recreation and committee, that is the uh, text of the draft of the resolution. So Michael, a couple of questions. First, um, why is there not a number associated with this resolution? Because it's a committee resolution, Senator, and it's not been introduced. Consequently, it only has a draft request number until such time as it's formally introduced. That is why. So if we vote here today to have it introduced, um, you're going to put a number on it and we have to get in touch with John Bloomer to have that put onto the calendar. Correct. I would be in touch with uh, Nadine Martin, the director of the legislative drafting operations, and she would coordinate with uh, John, I was about to say Senator, with Secretary Bloomer. Uh, normally, as you're probably aware, resolutions uh, or, or a bill that's a committee bill or resolution is signed out by the chair. I'm technically not sure how all of you are working that out, whether it's an email to the dean or a joint email to Senator Bloomer. I'm happy if you decide to pass this resolution to uh, draft that email and copy you and the dean and Secretary Bloomer as soon as we finish. That would be helpful. I'd the be other uh, question, the other question that I had was, in the event that uh, the commissioner decides to create a deed that, well, you've got a couple of different possibilities here, but in the event that he goes forward with a deed, does he have to come back to us to announce that that has actually happened? No, he does not. That okay. this gives this is the uh, this is the permission that the commissioner may uh, engage in all these activities. All right, committee. Anybody have any questions? I Senator do. Lyons. Yeah, I do. I. I, I, because it's been a while since we've talked about this, um, I'd like to ask the commissioner a couple of questions about the 50 foot right of way. That's a big right of way. Uh, do you know if there's a, a plan for um, a pervious surface going down or road or what, how they're gonna use that and what are the consequences for the forest next to it? Shall I take that, Mr. Chair? Yeah, it was for you. Sure. Yes, Commissioner. <laughs> it's for you. Thank you, Senator. Thanks, Senator Lyons. And uh, so for the record, Michael Snyder, Commissioner of Forest Parks and Recreation, thanks for spending time with us on this today for taking it up. We appreciate it. And also just by way of introduction, we also have um, uh, our general counsel, Megan Purvey, who helps with the legal aspects of this stuff and our director of lands administration and recreation, that's Becca Washburn. And if you don't mind, I'd actually, and hopefully Becca is ready, uh, I would like to um, de defer this question to Becca who has a little bit more on the ground understanding of the place and the situation there. Becca, can you address Senator Lyon's question about the, the right of way, its status and the, how, um, its implications for, for the, the land itself? I mean, it is an access way. That's the, what their use we're contemplating. But uh, Becca, would you fill in any, any details? I can, Michael. For the record, I'm uh, Becca Washburn, Director of Lands Administration and Recreation for Forest Parks and Recreation. Uh, and to your question, Senator Lyons, uh, this is a pre-existing right-of-way that has traditionally been used um, as access to existing Okemo State Forest land. It is an unpaved, um, unpaved surface, and the intention is to, to maintain it as an unpaved surface. 
the, the hierarchy of use that Michael Chernick referenced with forest management being the highest and best use of this right of way um, has resulted in an agreement with the adjacent landowners that makes it clear that they cannot do anything that would inhibit our use and the public's use of this right of way, including uh, the way they, they plow the, the right of way in the winter, um, other uses of storing equipment close to the right of way. Any of those activities have been managed to ensure that the public access and our forest management rights uh, are well protected. Okay, thank you. That's mm -hmm. helpful. Thank you, Becca. Senator Maza, I saw your hand. Yeah, is, is this an advantage for the college or is this... Uh, the, uh, the university owns, uh, as, a, as I understand it, has a fairly substantial uh, set of land holdings, um, not, not you know, restricted to Vermont, but significant holdings within Vermont. And uh, it's part of a... Uh, you know, their real estate investment. Uh, to some extent, they use them as uh, forest classrooms for the Yale uh, School of Forestry and Environmental Science. Uh, but uh, it's no particular advantage for them. They're just like any other landowner. They have uh, access rights over the right of way to their land uh, across public land. Uh, and uh, that's an advantage, but um, it's no particular additional advantage. So financially, we don't get any money for it. This is just a turn it over to them. Oh, it's it's really doing something that we committed to doing many many years ago and just finishing that. But yes, you're right. There's no transaction in. Okay, thank anybody you. Else, any other questions? So, Senator Hooker, um, you talked about a contingency. So, and does this just activate that? Is that what this is doing? Right. Activating uh, the, that right of way? This is author, what this resolution is, is the General Assembly giving the commissioner authority to, uh, to make transactions involving uh, uh, real estate interests of the, of the state. So, I, whereas I can, with governor's approval, I can purchase lands or acquire interests in lands, um, but in order to convey or change in any way, uh, I need legislative approval. And that's what this mechanism is, is giving me that authority. We're trying to be fully just, you know, transparent about what we would do with that authority, but it's you granting me authority to act on these terms to, in this case, um, complete and refine this, uh, uh, tr the um, uh, access of, of a, a, a granting of a, of a right of way and clarifying it. Any other questions? Michael. Sure. Benny, may I just explain very briefly that the concept of the contingency clause, Senator Hooker, that was so listed in the resolution refers back to the original 1964 transaction between the state and the university. And this is just finally now on an extremely delayed basis exercising that contingency. Thank you. I would say it was delayed quite a bit, 64. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, were you there then, or what? Some of these people weren't. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or witticisms? Are we ready Mike. to vote this out? Is there yep. a motion? So move. Uh, okay, you move. Senator Mazza moves that we vote out of committee favorably. Draft request 20.0815 specifically draft 3.2. Senator Hooker, would you like to call the roll, please? Sure. Senator Lyons. Yes. Senator Mazza. Yes. Senator Rogers, not available. Senator Hooker, yes. Senator Benning. Yes. Okay. Four, Can okay. I ask you a question, One. Mr. Chair? Yes, Senator Lyons. Uh, does this ha have we got permission from rules to send us ahead? Oh, we do. Good. All right, that's good. <laughs> Wonderful. Another it may second. be the subject of our next all Senate caucus. Okay. I'll uh, try to summarize it in 30 seconds and see how well that goes. Mr. Chair, if I may make a comment. Yes, sir. Well, first, uh, I, I'd like to uh, correct an oversight. I should have also, by way of introduction, just in case you're wondering, we also have here Megan, Megan Harris from the Attorney General's Office, who's been 
instrumental in helping us with the other piece of this uh, proposal uh, in uh, at, at Branbury State Park. So uh, we didn't, uh, Megan, thanks for joining. Uh, turns out we didn't have to need uh, rely on your expertise in the background, but uh, also just, just wanna close by saying thank you. I, we really do appreciate it. And um, as you mentioned this to the caucus, et cetera, and from here on, if you encounter any questions, we are more than happy to provide answers and information as is needed. So uh, you, ha you know how to reach me and I'll stay tuned oh. and hopefully it goes smoothly. And thank you for that. I'll, all I can say, Mike, it takes a lot of people though to back you up. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, they're so all lawyers. Yeah, that's really dangerous. Behind yeah. every man are a whole wow. lot of good yeah, women. Right? <laughs> no, no argument here. I mean, yeah. Absolutely. Megan Harris, did you want to add anything to this uh, collection of conversation, or do you have any constructive witticisms we should know about? I don't, but thank you for uh, for the announcement there, Mike, and thank you very much um, for your time today. Okay. Everybody, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to rely on you, Michael Chernick, to get the email together. And um, if they ask, let them know I'll be the reporter on the bill. If they have any questions, they can contact me directly. I will be doing that as soon as I sign off, Senator. Thank you all very much. And Philip, you're not on the screen right now, but thanks for thank putting you all. us all together. Yes, thank you, you very much. Welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you all. Take care. Bye -bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.